Okay, folks, uh, we're here again today uh, with another edition of My Life with Robert Burns. We're really pleased you could join us. My name is Douglas McKenzie, and my friend and colleague from New Covenant Burns Club, Jim Thompson, is with me also. Hi, Jim. Hi, Douglas. Hi, everybody. We've been having conversations with our cronies around the Burns world, and uh, we know you like to listen in and, and see what we've been talking about. So today, uh, we've got with us uh, the president, the new president of uh, Airsoft Association of Burns Clubs. Today, please welcome James Waite. Hello. Hello, we all. Do, doing well, James. Nice to see you. How are you today? I'm not bad. Um, not bad. Um, just in for work, so... Um, not too rushed, but a wee bit another busy day. Um, I've been at work throughout the pandemic. I'm one of these key workers, in which I, I never really knew I was a key worker till the pandemic struck. And then I really only realised I was a key worker when I didn't have to stand in a queue at Tesco. So um, <laughs> I, it, it wasn't all bad. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, 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 and your job and your life and such like? Hi. So, um, as most folk know, I, I'm James Way. I, I stay in Bees. Um, I was 40 at the start of October. Um, I know these grey hairs and, and lines probably suggest it was more than that, but no, that was all it was. I was born in Urban Central and I've stayed in Bees all my life. Um, I really am born and bred here. Um, I went to Bees Primary and thereafter to that famous Academic Institute of Garnock Academy. Um, I always get a laugh when people of a certain age say, oh, that's my school. I think I was 35 by the time they had knocked down all the schools I went to. I don't know if it's a reflection on me or the state of the building, but uh, <laughs> I believe it or not, there's not a single school left standing um, that I attended. When leaving school, I had this wonderful idea that what I wanted to do was become a social worker because that was just like the best thing I could do. And two years into university, I thought this is the worst thing I could ever do. Um, and I gave up and I thought I better get a job. So knowing that that was a kind of a kind of idea, I started working in a residential school for children. Um, at that time, it was doing in Adrussan. Some folk who know the area will know the school. It was um, Seafield School. It was a big baronial style house in, in the way out of Adrussan. And... I was there for a year and I thought this is actually the career for me and a few moves later and time spent working in Glasgow and um, came back to work in North Ayrshire for North Ayrshire Council in 2007 and then in 2014 I went back to Glasgow to work and since then I've been working for Glasgow City Council and I'm now the manager of a children's home, one of many that Glasgow have um, and it's it's a fantastic job I, I have to say I'm, I'm coming up for nearly 20 years and I don't think and I know it's a cliche but I don't think I've ever had two days the same and I'm sure Jim I know what, what you did for a living you'd probably say the same thing when you're working with people and you're working with the public and things you just never have two days the same and it's always a challenge and it kind of keeps it fresh um, I don't really know if I could ever of getting into a job where I was sitting in front of a computer typing or inputting data. Um, I'm absolutely a kind of people person and I, I fairly enjoy that. And I suppose that the really important thing I should say it was um, a, a bit like Robert when he, when he met Nelly. I was similar. Um, I met my wife at work. Um, I met her in 2006 and it was hate at first sight. Um, I thought she was the worst worker I had ever came across and she thought I was a terrible person to work with too. However, that aside, um, we, we got in like a house on fire and we were engaged in 2009 and married in 2011 in Las Vegas. And I always feel I need to follow that statement up by saying, but no but Elvis. It was a lovely <laughs> wee um, chapel that for the pictures um, just looks like a, a normal church where a wee minister and um, everything else. The only thing I sort of guaranteed myself was good weather, which with hindsight maybe wasn't the wisest idea because it was about 25, 26 degrees and I was there in my full kilt. Kilt, jacket, waistcoat, everything. 
furry soaps up to my knees. It was um, it was very warm, and it was very popular. Um, we went for dinner that night in a hotel in the Stratosphere Hotel in Vegas at the top. And at the end of the evening, I went to the toilet and come back to find Jackie, who was still in her full wedding dress at this stage, surrounded by about fifty Japanese tourists taking photographs of her. Well, if they were taking photographs and she was in her cell, when the wee fat Scottish guy turned up in the kilt, they were in heaven. <laughs> um, so to this day, I'm pretty sure I get more photographs than in my photo, wedding photo went worldwide. Um, but yeah, we've um, we've uh, kind of lived happily ever after, and we, we never have an argument. And that's not because we don't argue; it's because neither the two is we get in. And if you can't win something, it's probably no worth starting. And I think that's been the the, the secret to it will be 10 years next year. Um, well done. And, 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 and the, the, the children's home, how many young people have you got under your 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 guidance? Yeah, so the, the, the unit, um, we should call them houses now, but the, the house I manage has um, five young people. Um, that's what we're registered for. And um, we're very fortunate location-wise. We are uh, right in the middle of the West End. Um, we're sort of equidistant between or and more and the Glasgow Academy. So it's a yeah. really great position. Um, we've got a group of young, unaccompanied young people, um, which obviously is an ideal place for, for those young people, you know. The, the West End in itself is just so multicultural, you know, as you drive along. Um, it's all you know, different shops and for, you know, there's a shop Jerusalem and African village and it's just such a, a, a great area and such a handy area as well you know I think um, lockdown kind of proved that to us where our kids were you know like two or three minutes walk for the botanics five ten minutes walk for um, Kelvin Grove and we had all that in our doorstep despite living right in the heart of the inner city and of course when times are normal we're minutes away for the city centre via the subway so it's a really good location to try and um, integrate and, and bring these yeah. young people who have had horrendous life stories, as and you what's can imagine. Our, what sort of age group are they? So they're, they're mainly about kind of 14, 15 when, when they yeah. arrive, you know, and they've been um, brought into the country, maybe not through um, the most official channels. And, you know, um, it's, 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 it's a very, it's very, um, can be very upsetting some of the stories yeah but you know that opportunity to kind of bring them into our culture and learn a bit of their culture and you know they're quite keen to be reciprocal and you know often they'll, they'll cook food and um, teach your language and you know I'm, I'm always worried though that if I ever go to any of these countries and speak that language they could be teaching me anything because I'm getting <laughs> the um <laughs> just you know this means hello I does it right hi <laughs> um and of course, what ends up happening is, is a year, 18 months down the line, they speak like us, you know, and yeah. you've got this wee guy that's going, hi, I can, hi, you know, and um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's always, um, it's, it's very good, but that, that, that's been a sort of recent thing, it's only been the last couple of years we, we, we've worked with that group of young people, but it's been, um, it's been really, really interesting, again, it's that bit of, it's like a fresh challenge, it's like a, yeah. a new challenge, and of course, as I say, we try to bring bits and pieces in. So yep. it will only be the first time that I've um, read a bit of poetry or kind of put, well, haggis out in the table and we had stuff stuff planned for, for St Andrew's Day and all these kind of things. So aye, it's, um, it's quite a nice kind of multicultural environment. Yeah, that's. I, I would imagine it's quite quite rewarding as, as well as being challenging. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely. As you know, when when the young people move on and then you know they come back to see you and you you know find out how well they're doing and the difference for when when they, they come in and you know they don't speak any English and you know a few months later they've got friends and, and social contacts and you know that they're, they're picking up the language and they're settled and I, and I don't think we can underestimate that in the long term these young people are, are really. You know, they're, they're really keen to be here, they're really um, happy to be here and to take the opportunities that are afforded them and you know there's some really great success stories about what uh, some of the, yeah. the young refugees yeah. have went on to achieve. Yeah. And, and with all that responsibility do you get much chance to relax? Yeah, um, <laughs> well I, I should say yes but um, 
I, I, I mentioned earlier I'm, I'm being born and bred, um, and, and I really feel that one of the key things is to give back to your community. So um, I'm actually involved in a couple of things. Locally, I'm, I'm vice chair of the community council. Um, we had no community council and that kind of link in the whole move of local government and how it filters down to the, to the towns was missing. And we were part of a group that reformed the community council in 2017. And it sort of went from strength to strength. And I guess a bit like, you are probably, maybe more yourself, Douglas, you know, that this bit of we towns that are together, but sort of compete with each other. We had an element yeah. of that up here in the Garnet Valley. And one of the things we started was to align ourselves with the other two local towns being Dorai and Coburnie and, and push forward as a, as a sort of Garnet Valley voice. And we've been able to do that. And unfortunately due to COVID, we've, we had to cancel, but we had managed to secure between North Ayrshire Council and Scottish Government almost 60,000 pounds that was specifically for the Garnet Valley and for groups in the Garnet Valley. And we were going to um, have a sort of showcase day where the groups would come along and almost sell their wares. So we've had to put that back a year, but we're now hopeful that we can turn that into a wee bit of um, COVID recovery, you know, kind yeah. of broaden the criteria and try and get groups back in their feet. Because I think we're all concerned that in the, Very good. the back end of this, it'll be a struggle for some groups to reform. I'm sure. I'm sure it will. And and with all of that, I mean, you're not. That, that doesn't sound particularly relaxing. But you manage a wee bit of golf and walking the dog and such like. I well, I I um I, I do play golf. Um, I've not played a lot this year. I've the bit of a bad back. Um, if you're going to have a year where you've got a bad back and nobody to play golf, the year you weren't allowed to play is probably um <laughs> the, the best one. So, I my my plan was certainly to limit my golf to social games this year. I was never in a position fitness-wise to play at the monthly medal. And yes, I, I, in our past time, um, we, we, I spent a lot of time kind of out and walking the dog in bits and pieces. Um, unfortunately, I lost him a couple of years ago. And oh. um, it, it's it's not as convenient now. I don't work shifts anymore. I work 95. And that means the house is empty all day and it's maybe not the best environment to try and get another wee dog in. So Aye. we might need to, to look at that, you know. But um, it's no stop to us. Um, we were one of the folk that took up walking. There was a lot of nice walks from about the area that I had never done. Um, and a lot of other walks. Um, I dragged I dragged my pair wife to everything. I probably should just say that at the start. Um, <laughs> as you can imagine, old oh, Jackie, I've got something with the community council. You need to come along. Oh, Jackie, I know the rain and wind and snow is coming sideways, but come on and stone it here close with me to a late rare, rare wreath. Um, She's, she's been at everything and she's she's certainly long suffering. But I also dragged her up Connick Hill this year because I thought that would be a good idea. Every man in the every man in the dog literally seemed to be walking up Connick Hill and I thought, I that that's what I'm going to do. So I made her get in the motor and it was probably one of the warmest days and we walked up the hill. Um so I I tried to get out and get away from work and um, switch the phone off, switch the the laptop off and and, and relax. Good. Well, we're going to get you away for your your work as well, and get you to talk a bit about your your other interest. So I'm going to pass over to Jim to talk to you a bit about your your life with Burns. You know, James, it's an easy start. How did you get started with Burns? Aye, well, I, I I thought this might be a question, and I was trying to kind of think, and I suppose I bet you it was there was always something in the house with Burns and. I guess as a small child, I came to realise it was like where my father went once a year and come back, maybe a wee bit worse for wearing unsteady in his feet. Um, and I thought, ah, I wonder where he's been. But I guess my first recollection of Burns having some sort of importance within the family was when I was at school and, and, and you learn Burns poems. And um, it turned out that it, primary the, the cup that the the, the, the winner got um, was actually donated by my grandmother in, in sort of memory of her, her husband my dad's stepfather um, a gentleman called William Cohen and that that cup still although the schools have moved on that cup still in um, circulation and I was up judging the school burns competition a couple of years ago and I was actually able to get a, a photograph of it 
And I suppose after that, I realised that I wasn't very good at recitation. I, I have the world's worst memory. I, I just cannot get something to go in and stay there in the right order. And it's, that's quite a, a disadvantage when you're um, trying to learn poems. So the next time I probably was introduced to Burns was when Donald Reed decided the youth group should have a Burns supper. And maybe it's always been obvious, but he worked out that I like to talk. And Donald <laughs> gave me this, and we're going back, I remember 14, 15, Donald gave me this speech and basically said, when I tell you, you stand up and you read that out. And that was me. I, I was kind of hooked. This idea of standing there, imparting information, people laughing, people having fun, the whole enjoyment of the evening. Um, and although, as I say, it was a, a youth group burn supper, you, you can imagine um, Donald managed to rope in a, a few worthy speakers. And um, I remember... The, the, the minister at the time, you know, getting up and reciting at Tama Shanter and, you know, thinking about it, you know, being 15, never really having heard Tama Shanter and, and somebody getting up and, and, and reciting this, you know, it was, it was great and I, I guess for the year on in, I, I was just waiting for the point in time where I, I could go along to a burn supper and, and that's what I did. Um, as soon as I was old enough, I was invited along to the Bar Mill Jolly Beggars and that, that was me. I've kind of been there ever since. And I've sort of grown up for, for, the, for the, the boy that emulated his father because it was a good night out to the, the person that was willing to step up and, and, and say a few things and, and do a few things to keep the, the night going. Ah, well, Donald is a good start. <laughs> Donald's just uh, different. But you know, um, been serving, you know, in, in, in an official capacity with the Ayrshire Association for a long time. How, how did you get started there? Was it the Barnwell Jolly Beggars you came through? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think 2010, um, I became president of the, 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 the Jolly Beggars. And maybe it's just me, but I think if you're president of something, you do the job right. It's no a title, it's no a, a, a self grandizing thing you want to put something in and um, I was very keen so when the club were then saying we need three reps to go to these Ursa association meetings I kind of said well I'm, I'm the president I'll, I'll go and I did and I kind of went to meetings back and forward um, and kind of sat there and didn't really know folk and nobody was friendly enough and you kind of get to know the folk and you sit with the same people and and then there was a, a fateful night Jim you made a call um uh, <laughs> at, at the Rafa Club in, in Prestes and um, your good self pointed out that it was a really hard job to be president and, and to take minutes and there had never really been a secretary Angus had kind of dipped in and Leslie had dipped in and, and you had dipped in and I, I'm, I'm sure at the time and I, I kind of quoted this last year when I, I, I left the post as secretary that what I actually agreed to was taking the minutes and I'm pretty sure um, that that was that was the job. And I think at the next meeting you gave me a briefcase first off, and the, the rest sort of <laughs> fell into place. And um, I've got every sympathy for Derek now because everybody is friendly, and I, I'm not defining anything. But everybody's so friendly; they presume you know everybody. And I probably spent the first two years going, I don't know who spoke. I, I didn't, who, who? and I was kind of writing things down, and I had no idea. And, Derek's a bit made up front of me because I've noticed him saying, sorry, you'll need to remind me your name. And of course, that, not knowing people's names, uh, led to probably the funniest story of my time as secretary, when dutifully I was sitting typing up the minutes and I'm typing in the, the list of who was there and never thought anything of it, just um, Jim Thompson, Douglas McKenzie, you know the usual. Sent it out, never heard a word. We got to the next meeting and a hand went up, and I said, is there any matters arising? Now, unbeknown to me, some wise guy, and I still don't know, recorded that Gina Lola Brigada was at the Ursa <laughs> Association meeting. Now, at my age, I had absolutely no idea who Gina Lola Brigada was, 
but I marked her down um, as being at the Usher Association meeting and only found out that the next um, quarterly meeting that she, she clearly, well, if she was there, maybe I'll saw. Um, so we'll presume she wasn't there. Um, so there was a joker in the pack and uh, that's, so I'm, I've, I, that's, my, that's my moment. That's, that's certainly my bit. But was there it no just, Tina Lola Brigida that represented Alloway or somewhere like that? <laughs> Do you know, you say that, um, I, I think it might have been somebody for the air. I'm sure they had listed her doing as being a member of the Airburns Club. Um, I, I, aye. Do you know what? Th there was no malice in it and it was genuinely funny at the next meeting. And Yeah, I guess I, I had a long time, I think. Um, I think it's seven, seven, eight years, I think, maybe is the secretary. And I'll, I'll put my hands up and see I wasn't the world's best secretary. Um, but it, it it did the job at the time, you know. It, it was absolutely what what was um, what was needed, and um, really, um, Keenan Derrick, and I'm, I'm glad he's taken over, and um, he's quite infused for the role, and, and that's good because I think that's what the association needs um, is, is people to drive it forward. And did I see that you're president of the Jolly Beggars again this year? I am. Yes, um, COVID president. Um, yeah. We're a very small club, and, and maybe this would be a good time to give you some of the background of the Jolly Beggars. Um, well, we're not a big club, we're the Barnmill Jolly Beggars, um, founded in 1944 as part of a committee in Barnmill who were trying to sort of create things for men returning from the war. Um, and obviously over time they've moved to bees. What I probably didn't know when I went to my first Jolly Beggars meeting and only later found out was my great grandfather was one of the founding members of the Jolly Beggars, um, a gentleman who went by the name R.B. Neil, um, fittingly the R.B. standing for Robert Burns Neil. Um, so that, that was quite nice and it, it was lovely in the 75th dinner that myself, I spoke and Alistair Anderson, um, I think most people know Alistair. Yep. Um, Alistair spoke, and again, likewise, his um, his father had been one of the founding members of the club. Um, so that was uh, a lovely a lovely occasion for us all. So yeah, the, the, the Jolly Beggars is a small, hearty crew. There's probably only about 20, 25 regularly turning up for the monthly meetings. Um, some of them are getting on in years. Please don't get me wrong, we've no problem attracting 70, 80 to our bun supper and to our annual St Andrew's dinner. But it makes a sort of pool of those willing and able to step up to take office positions a wee bit smaller. So I'm, I'm no back in because I was one of the great presidents. I'm, I'm back in because I'm one of the available. Um, but it was, a, it was a nice touch of the club to, to time it uh, alongside being president of Ayrshire, which is um, a massive honour. So yeah, we're a we're a small keen club. We've had a 70, 75 successive suppers and seventy six successive St Andrews dinners, um, which we're we're hoping. Um, I know this is, we'll, we'll go out a wee bit later, but we're going to even try have a, an online Zoom St Andrews dinner um, this year to keep that pattern going in in some way, shape, or form. And um, there's probably clubs. Well, there is clubs like Dorai with much longer running things. And that's going to be a shame to see things um, having a break in them after so many years. Well, we, we, made, we made a commitment to Newcomer that we were going to continue and have every event on the date that it's in our syllabus, um, even though most of them are going to be via this medium, because I think this has proved to be quite successful over, over the months for, for, for many, many things that we'd never thought we'd try. Yeah. Just, just when you were talking there about, uh, you know, uh, when this goes out, um, you realise it's going to be a couple of weeks, but I think you've been caught at that before, have you know? Yes, I. When you said to me there was a, a few weeks delay, I was feeling bad that I hadn't put my Christmas tree up or anything behind me or any lights, and it reminded me of a, a few years back they were um, finishing up Deal or No Deal, and, and they took it on a sort of whistle stop tour around the country and a friend said, well I've got two tickets for the recording of Deal or No Deal, do you want to go? And it was in Kelvin Grove Art Galleries and as I say, pretty close to work and I thought that's that's for me. 
So I turns up and it was the start of November and we goes in and there's all these Christmas trees and they've decorated the, well, the whole of the kind of hall in the art gallery. It was lovely. And when it came out on telly, the camera's panning round and here's me sitting at the back with my Jacob on because it was called with my poppy in. Um, so I slightly gave away the, the, the story um, and I couldn't even tell anybody at the time because we were sworn to secrecy because believe it or not, although it was them finishing up, the, the girl won the million pounds, she or the 250,000 I should say, she actually gambled all the way up and you know the box thing and um, won so it was having only had the chance to go and see it because it was in touring Glasgow I'm, I'm probably one of the few people that actually seen somebody win the, the, the full amount of money but I there's me with my poppy and just going out on Christmas Day or something you know it was, um, they must have just thought that boy's not that Jacob on since then <laughs> At least you've never been caught at a burn supper with a poppy, and I would, I would hope. But uh, you must have been to a few suppers over the years now. Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm realistic, Jim. I, I, I hear stories of guys with 14, 15, 16, and I, I'm pretty sensible in, in what I take on. Um, up until four years ago, three years ago, I worked shift as well. So I worked two weekends out of three, so that was quite limiting in, in what you could do um, I never like to say no if somebody asked me to go along and, and help them out by speaking or, or that but um, you, you also don't want to stretch yourself too thin you know I kind of said earlier that it's better to try and do something well than it is to do an awful lot of something so yeah I, I think my record probably is about it's, it's, it's no high maybe eight or nine I'm, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty realistic in, in what I can do Um and of course, up in this neck of the woods, we are very traditional. I think I'll use the word traditional. Um, we don't have an awful lot of bum suppers up this way where women are allowed. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know if that makes Jackie happy or not, actually. I'm trying to think. Because there is a couple I've been to and, and she's been invited and she's not been keen. Um, you know, she's, uh, she's not quite as front and centre and, and sitting there so when they say, come on in, you're at the tap table, everybody's looking at you, and your wife's to sit there beside you. It's a, uh, it's no her cup of tea, um, which actually <clears throat> reminds me of a, another story. Um, we were at the Jolly Beggars, and I think it was the, the, the ladies' night. We have an annual ladies' night, and whatever they'd done when they'd set the tables in the afternoon, every other couple were sitting side by side. So the table of eight was, you know, husband, wife, husband, wife, husband. However, whoever set the tables, um, my, my good friend, John, has the same surname as me. We, we may be distant related, it's the Garnet Valley, but we're not any, we're no brothers, we're no first cousins, we're, we're distant relations. And of course, at that point in time, neither me or John were, were married to, to our wives. And they had got a wee bit confused. So they'd sat me next to John's wife, Liz, and sat John next to Jackie, which was, nobody was first, you know, we're still across from each other. Till, of course, I stood up and started saying things like, I, you know, see my wife's big ass and, you know, all this kind of carry on that, that you have. <laughs> and everybody in the room's looking at John's wife. No mind. They're following this pattern. Um, and and Pearl Liz is now sitting there thinking, what have I let myself into? As everybody thinks all these jokes and, and smart comments I'm making are aimed at her. So since then, we've always made sure if there's, Table orders were, were sitting in the right place, but I hanging about with a, with a pal who's got the same surname as you can be can be a wee bit tricky. <laughs> you talked about uh, at, at suppers doing uh, mo more speeches than, than than recitations or anything like that. Is there a particular aspect of Burns that you you're, you're interested in? You know that you feature in, in your speeches and such like. Yeah, I mean, I think. <laughs> It really depends what you're doing and, and who you're doing it for. Um, you know, if, if you're maybe at a bowling club, you're looking to try and impart a wee bit of knowledge, you know, of a kind of general information, you know, to somebody that maybe that's not going to be their only experience of Burns that year or maybe for a couple of years. And, and if you're talking at a, a, a Burns club, you know, maybe I look to try and find something a wee bit different, something a wee bit unusual or potentially a take on something, you know, as opposed to just uh, he was born here, he went here, he did this, you know. 
I, I think it really depends where you're going. Um, I've had some, I, I've had some, I've had some good feedback. Um, although to be fair, I've never went to somebody and told them they weren't very good. So maybe that, maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should, maybe what I should say is, folk in the Burns movement are very polite. They, they say you're good. Um, no, there's a couple of places I've invited me back again. So. You know, maybe did the toast to lasses and they said you want to come back and do the immortal memory and vice versa. So, yeah, I, I think it is about targeting your audience. You know, if, if you're if you're in a golf club somewhere, there's no point, you know, dissecting one of the poems and getting into the thoughts about where he was and you know what was going on. You're probably going to lose your audience. You know, there, it's I. It's definitely about speaking to who's in front of you. I think. Do you have any, any favourite verses or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, got to say, my, my favourite's probably the Twa Dogs. Um, I, I, there's there's so, so many reasons, you know. I'm, I, I'm absolutely a dog person, you know. I, I say, I torment myself now and daily looking at pictures of the puppies and realising that I couldn't get the care and attention. And I think, you know, Burns writing that and dedicating it to his, to his beloved dog just um, kind of resonates with me. But also what he does in it, um, it it's, the, it's the ability to use that medium. And it's not the only poem, obviously, but that ability to take two dogs, but use those dogs to sort of look at and dissect the ills of society, you know, through the, the sort of, through the kind of, Innocence that the dogs don't really, they don't really understand it, but they see it and, and they can kind of put it across. And I think that that skill and ability, you know, it's um, it's fantastic and it's a uh, it's a favourite of mine. And if you get a really good um, threesome who are reading it out, you know, in, in the parts, it can it can really be brought to life. I think. You know? Is there anybody in the, in the Burns, either his works or his life, that, that you can identify with? Yeah, well, identify is maybe, maybe too strong. Um, but um, a man that you spent a lot of time looking at and researching, Jim, Tama Santa, you know, we, we've all been there. Um, we've all stayed too long in the pub. We've all been fear of what the wife has to see. Um, and, and I think there's a... There's a there's a wee bit where everybody I think can see themselves, you know, the the I really shouldn't bother with this, but I'm just gonna have a wee bit of a closer look. You know, the the, the misguided um the misguided the misguided man. Um but actually at the end of the day, you know, he's he's just a man and he's and he's trying to make his way back home and he kinda of gets a wee bit sidetracked and waylaid and you know, and I think some of the lines in, in Tama Shanta are, are some of the most meaningful. You know, the, the the whole bit where, you know, the like the you know, about the poppies and the snowflake in the river and it's it's so poignant, you know, that it's absolutely true. I mean you can't really um can't really get time back. When time passes it's gone, you know, and you know, there's a lot of kind of quoting folk and you see things you know, like Carpe DM and you know, it's, it's, it's a similar idea, you know, that it's this, you know, strike while the iron's hot, do things for the day. And, you know, I think that's a kind of philosophy I go by. You know, you, you said earlier, Douglas, that I can't have a lot of spare time, you know. And, and there's a wee bit of that's where I kind of take it from. You know, you've got a lot of time later and you've got a lot of time that might be coming to you. But right now, do what you can and, and try and do as much as you can in this moment. Well, you seem to have been doing a, a hell of a lot when you know, we've, we've talked about uh, about your job and how how intense that can be and, and your responsibilities in the community and with various aspects of the, the Burns organisation. Uh, have you got any, any other ambitions within the, the Burns movement, either uh, something you'd want to, to get to know more about in the Burns story or, or some aspect of the hierarchy within the Burns movement? Um, I, I think you, you can absolutely um, learn more and it's always good to uh, 
sort of capture that. I think the series of stuff that you've been doing and, and getting this down in video and, and folks recitations and things, I think that's brilliant. That's going to be massive going forward. You know, it's something we don't have. We can all think of of folk who are no longer with us and think, I wish I had a, a recording of them doing such and such. So I I, um, I think that sort of encyclopedic thing is, is going to be fantastic and hopefully we can get more of that in person when, when we're allowed. In terms of aspirations in the Buns world, no, I think um, I, I think Airship will probably probably do me. Um, um, I, I think once you get past that, maybe it, it gets a wee bit more business minded and and sort of corporate and maybe gets a, a wee bit away from you know being able to to kind of get the hands on stuff if that makes if that makes sense. It's you know to say the federation, for instance don't do a great job, um, you know, but it's a wee bit corporate, a wee bit business driven. Um, I had, had a shot of that. Um, I was captain of the golf club for three years. So I've had that bit of trying to juggle business and accounts and staffing and, and I was good, but um, I'll tell you what, my golf fair suffered. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll no put, no put you in the spot and ask <laughs> as a federation president, if your burn suffered, but I, I think um, when you start getting into positions like that, you know, you, you kind of get caught up in an awful lot of background stuff and some of the things at the floor and, and maybe some of the, again, it's a comparison to the golf, but maybe some of the enjoyment goes out of, you know, yeah. when, when, you're, when you're needing to sort of work and, and drive things, um, you can lose a wee bit of the fun and enjoyment. Yeah. Have you uh, got any particular... Um, plans for your, your time as president of their association? Yeah, yeah, I, I think we have. Um, and then I see we because we need to we need to move the association forward. Um, I appreciate this isn't a soapbox, but uh, we really need to do something. The age of those attending the meetings uh, is increasing. Um, we, we need to try and sort of engage with a, a younger group of people. I know New Cumnock's been pretty good at kind of sending some younger represent, representatives along to the association. Um, we need to continue to build on the schools competition. We need to make the quarterly meetings more efficient. And if that means we get the meeting done in 40 minutes and we spend the next 40 minutes having a cup of tea, a chat and a boiler with folk, that, that's absolutely fine. That's 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 part of it, that's part of that discussion, but sometimes I think we've all been there at meetings that just seem to, to drag on for quite a long time and that can sometimes not be the best. So we need to get the numbers increasing, although I did some um, digging when I was passing stuff over to Derek and believe it or not, the numbers have only dropped a lot in 10 years. We were always around about that 35 to 40 and we're probably about the 30 to 35 um, level just now. I think we need to engage with clubs. We had plans last year to do this, but, but COVID get in the way of, of the kind of president, vice president and getting out there and going to clubs and asking clubs why, you know, you, you pay your money, that's great, but why are you not engaging? You know, the Air Association is not a healthy financial footing, so the, the, the annual money is not what's important to us. We're not going to have to get clubs to say, come on back, we want your um, £30 a year or whatever it is. What we want is we want the clubs to come back because we want to see what they can bring to us and what they can bring to their fellow clubs and indeed what their fellow clubs um, can take to them. You know, we, we've an absolute wealth of talent and it's how we, we share that and, and get people connected. We hope we've made a start with a new badge. Um, I know it seems like a, a kind of small thing, but it's part of the, the badge is to get marketing um, in terms of Facebook, social media. Profile, so we've got a nice new badge that um, we consulted on, and we think we got whatever we wanted, but obviously we'll never please every single person. So that that's the next stage is to get through this COVID and be able to get out there and and try and get clubs more involved. You know, tell us the truth. You know, you're not going to offend me because I'm only president for two years. So what is it we can do to to keep people? and get people back. Um, and I, if, if people do have suggestions, 
absolutely. Let us know because it's the Ayrshire Association of Burns Clubs, so it belongs to all the Burns Clubs in Ayrshire. Um, and, and I don't know, I, I, we don't have the answer, but I'm hoping we get them. Um, I, I really am. I, I'd love to see um, these slick meetings going forward with 50 and 60 people there. Um, I don't know if I should... I'm going to use them to a secret because I only briefly discussed this the other night. We feel very sorry for the young people. One of the last events probably in Scotland before lockdown was, of course, our skills competition in March. I think the competition was a Saturday and the country went into lockdown the following Friday. And we, we felt sorry for the kids because normally what happens to the winners is they go forward and represent Ayrshire at the Federation and they get to perform again. So all being well and restrictions being lifted, we're looking at having some form of youth event where we'll invite the winners to come forward and to perform for um, the public um, at an event. And we're sort of hopeful that we'll be able to get that at the back end of the summer. It is going to depend very much on when community centres can open, when we can get in touch with schools. But we'd be really, um, really looking forward to that. And I think that would be a a different thing for the association to have a, a kind of informal social gathering and showcase the talent of our young people. Sounds like a great idea. And, and, and let me let you in a wee secret. Um, your secret's out there now. Indeed. Um, if Beth watches this, she'll probably say, we were just talking about that on the phone and, and hear you broadcast it to the world. So I guess what I've done is I've, I've just committed um, me and Beth to, to doing something um, <laughs> the back end of the summer. But um, let, let's just hope that, that, that whether the plans come to fruition, it's something we can at least plan for. Um, I, I think that's what everybody wants is to get there and get back around about the table and, and meet, all our, meet all our Burns friends. It's, the, it's the, the one thing that I have noticed is how friendly everybody is. I now have friends from all across Ayrshire, from all walks of life. It's the, it's a great leveller. It, it's the weirdest thing in the world. I, I don't know anywhere else. You know, if you go to play golf, you, you ken the guys that are well off because they've got the best clubs. You know, if you go to play football, you ken the folk that are good because they've got the nicest boots. Nothing tells you that when you walk into a room full of Burns folk. Nothing tells you who's the, who's the rich, who's the good. What you see is just everybody there with the one passion. You know, you, you could be sitting next to somebody that sweeps the streets, or you could be sitting next to somebody who's a professor. You, you just wouldn't know. And 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 I think that's um that that's brilliant for me. No, I just I, I just love that idea of it. Probably encompasses what Burns was looking for. You know, that everybody just comes together and and sits there. And it's been great for me. As I say, friends everywhere. And, and I, it's, it's very enjoyable. Oh, that's great, James. And, and I think you've picked the perfect way to end this podcast. Um, that's a tremendous sentiment. So it just leaves me to say to you, thanks very much for giving up your time and telling us all about your life with Robert Burns. Thanks, James. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Douglas. <laughs>